Molo San Bonani, hello house it shalom. Welcome to another episode of the Big Daddy Liberty Show. That's right, it's a Wednesday evening, and you know what time that is. You know that means your favorite fat boy and favorite Zionist is on the show, Big Daddy Liberty. Welcome to another episode of the show. Yes, I mentioned that I'm a Zionist on the show because we're talking all things Israel and specifically all things freedom of speech because. As you might know, the South African Chief Justice, that's Mohueng Mohueng, came under attack um, over the weekend um, and well into this week from various interest groups and various uh, uh, vested interest groups, if I'm to be brutally honest, <clears throat> ranging, of course, from the likes of your BDS, that's the Boycott, Divest and Sanctions grouping, the anti-Semitic group that they are, basically voiced their opinion when they heard an opinion they didn't like and started calling for the deplatforming of the, um, the Chief Justice in one way or the other. The ANC, that's the ruling party here in South Africa, chiming in also with its uh, long-established uh, friendship, chomi-chomi relationship that it has with terror groups like Hamas, um, it also chimed in and said, yeah, you know, let's uh, see the Chief Justice being placed under investigation by the Judicial Services Committee for voicing his opinion, for his appreciation and love for Israel. Now, the question I want to have today, the conversation I want to have today, and I have two guests who I'll get to just now, is, is there a selective approach to freedom of speech in South Africa? Do we accord freedoms such as the right to speak freely in a democracy like ours, um, selectively based on you know what the thought and language police in this country deem as being okay to talk about? So we're going to have that conversation with guys on the show. With that being said, let me please apologize to every single one of you um, for the poor notice uh, about the show. I am on the road. I'm currently in Durban and uh, I've <laughs> literally been traveling the whole day and very briefly, I mean, I, my, my afternoon was pretty crazy, guys. Um, I literally stopped a violent robbery in the middle of the road, in the highway, um, as three men accosted these two women in a car smashed the window and started reaching in and, you know, slashing at these women. And uh, it was the craziest scene ever. Like, again, I'm not a hero. I'm not a James Bond-esque type guy. But I noticed that no one was helping these two ladies. I stopped. Um hopped out and Baruch Hashem, thank you God, um, the Lord literally placed a weapon on the ground for me to pick up and to beat these criminals um, off of these guys in that moment. So it was a very hectic scene. Uh, I was full of adrenaline, so I, I must apologize for not being on time. I was a little shaken up after the incident, obviously still having adrenaline coursing in me. Um, and, you know, there was a little bit of a, a, a scuffle and a fight as they tried to stab uh, me in the moment when I intervened. Um, and again, uh, thank God, thank God, thank God, Baruch, Baruch Hashem, um, the, a taxi driver stopped in the scene and he also hopped out and came to my aid as I was fighting these guys off. So it was actually a very crazy scene this afternoon. So again, I'm really sorry. Um, you know me, I'm usually very punctual on the show, but I just had to contextualize as to why I'm late. And I, I really appeal uh, for your... your, 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 your um, uh, I don't know the word to use here, forgiveness for being late. So guys, I'm really sorry about that. And again, I must shout out the, the, the taxi driver. I, I, I didn't even get a chance to get his name because uh, as soon as the criminals ran off, you know, he hopped in his taxi and said, are you okay, fat boy? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm fine. Um, and, he, you know, he drove off. So I didn't even get a chance uh, to, to, to thank him in that moment for helping me fight these assailants off. And again, to those ladies, I, I'm sorry I didn't get your names either, but I hope you're also fine and you're okay. So um, praise God that everybody's fine. And, uh, you know, the only thing that was lost was a purse in that instance and not any lives and no one was harmed. So, guys, that's the reality of living in South Africa. And I always say this. It is our duty as South Africans to defend each other, no matter the risk. Um, and I know we're scared. I know the crime in this country is really bad and we're really frightened and, and that's a normal human reaction to have but at times it's just a little moment of saying a little prayer under your breath and saying Hashem guide my hand as I administer justice in this situation allow me to to 
be my conduit, be my strength in this moment as I defend these two ladies. Uh, and you, you guys know me and my passion for families in this country. I cannot stand to see people being victimized. I cannot stand to see criminals, whether they're in government or they're petty criminals like these guys, victimizing other people who are trying, as was the case here, to go back to their families in rush hour traffic. So again, I must thank God um, for literally guiding my hand in that moment and giving me the courage and the strength to fight these guys off. And yes, I will also say thank you to the Eteguini Metro Police, who eventually did get to the scene um, and you know brought a bit of order uh, to that. Unfortunately, we didn't catch the criminals, but you know, let's hope that happens. In you know, God always finds a way, man. Um, that's what I'm going to say. So um, I'm keeping my guests. I'm really sorry. I did say to them that um, <laughs> I'll try and keep the the, the conversation we're going to have to about 30 minutes, maybe 25 minutes or so as we look at this issue of freedom of speech. Do we live in a society where only some can say something? And do we accept this idea that there are bullies in our society who are the thought and language police? Especially when it's, quote unquote, in inverted commas, a controversial issue like Israel. Nothing controversial about it. If you look at this country, the vast majority of South Africans who are a people of faith, 97% Christian, are in full support of uh, Israel as a, a birthplace of their various faiths. And th the reason for that is, you know, I've always said there's a big difference between what our politicians and the chattering classes um, often say about Israel and actually what ordinary South Africans talk about when it comes to the state of Israel and the, and the, 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 um, the people of that country. And again, as a last gasp, if you want to know exactly what the people of Israel have to think and say about um, you know, the, the, the rhetoric often thrown at them, have a look at my channel, uh, look at the playlist, the Israel trip I took earlier this year. In fact, you'll see one of my guests on there. Um, I think he's in one of the videos. I did a whole bunch of videos when I was in Israel from their technology, their water technology, right down to even street interviews with ordinary Israelis. What do they think about some of the rhetoric aimed at them by anti-Semitic groups like BDS and of course hate groups uh, and terror groups like Hamas um, who poison the world to a large extent. So yes, as you can tell, I have a slant on this issue, proudly so, but hey, let me bring on my guests and let's have this conversation. Um, and as I struggle with my technology here, yeah, um, <laughs> just give me a second as I will have you guys on the screen shortly. Um, gentlemen. Uh, uh, okay, no gentlemen. Hang on, sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys, just give me a second. Uh, there's a slight technical glitch. Let me see if I can fix that in the moment. Ah, there we go. Now everybody's back on screen. Uh, now let me transition to you gentlemen. You are now live on the Big Daddy Lipta Show. Of course, I'm talking to Mr. Klaas Mohomole. He is a VITS law graduate and a, he was actually on the SRC in, in that part of the world. I, I, I know if I'm right on that one, uh, uh, Klaas. And I think the, the, the one I found very interesting and I want to ask you about it is you're the founder of Brainwashers Netball. Um, I'll let you tell me all about that. And of course, you're the, the, currently the coordinator for Africans for Peace, which is an organization uh, of independent writers and activists. Uh, Klaus, welcome to the show, brother. How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. How are you? I'm good, class. Let me just quickly welcome my other guest, a very um, a good friend of mine. I must say this with, with pride, because he really is a good friend of mine, Avi Abelo who is a, a, a vlogger and the host of the uh, Israel Unwired. Uh, sorry, I don't know if I butchered that. Is, uh, you'll correct me, Abba, but I think it's the, he's the host of the Israel Unwired show, which basically broadcasts out of Israel, the homeland of the Jewish people, as he likes to say, and I fully agree with him. Uh, Avi, welcome to the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Brother, I'm so happy, Achi, to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Big Daddy, and I'm just glad you're okay. I mean, hearing what you just experienced just a few hours ago is mind-boggling. Uh, so thank God you're okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad to have you on the show. <laughs> hey man, God always finds a way. Um, he looks after this fat boy, and, 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 and I'm glad he does. Um, but guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Class, can I just ask that you lower your camera just a little bit? We, we can't see your, your mouth, basically. So if you can just lower your camera um, so that you're fully in frame. Um, and whilst you're doing that, let me maybe just get straight into the issue, guys. Um, class, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, 
uh, class, maybe if you can, uh, sorry, you're still not in frame properly. Uh, if you can just lean forward, maybe that might help. Perfect. You're perfectly in frame, class. Now you're perfectly in frame. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Class, so you wrote a piece in response to uh, what became a furor, really, of various interest groups from uh, BDS um, to the ANC to the EFF, the radical leftist um, political party in this country, who are basically calling for the effective deplatforming of the uh, uh, chief justice in this country simply for his expressing his support for Israel. Well, can you just talk me through the piece and what were some of the main arguments you made in it? Yeah, uh, so uh, I'm from an organization called Africans for Peace. Uh, as Africans for Peace, we believe that the world can be a peaceful place if people are actually educated and people actually have a clue of what's happening uh, just outside their own country. So uh, obviously, uh, I, I, I keep up to date with the, with the with the news, whether it's social media, whether it's on TV and newspapers. Then it happened to me that I came across, uh, like I saw the video of the Chief Justice, and I saw it was more like a six minutes clip where he was speaking about his support to Israel, and because he's a Christian. He has to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and stuff like that. Then later on, I started seeing uh, hashtags. You know how people are in South Africa. They love the hashtag uh, must fall or whether it's the chief justice must fall or what and what must fall. Yeah. So after that, and I was like, oh, I was touched. And then I went through and I started seeing statements from political parties. I started seeing statements from anti-Israel organizations. That's when... I noticed that actually this is not a a, a right thing uh, to be left alone. So I needed to come in as a as a South African, as a concerned citizen, because at the time I felt like our freedom of expression, and freedom of religion, was actually being challenged. That's right. So what I did there was like, okay, I spoke to one of my friends, and I told him, look, I'm, I'm about to write an article here. I would, I think it would be nice as well if you were to contribute to the article because you are also in the same spectrum, is part of the organization as well, it's part of the Africans for Peace, the coordinator as well. So my point was that um, as a South African who are given a freedom of expression and given freedom of speech, as long as you don't entice violence, as long as you're not promoting uh, propaganda. So I felt like the Chief Justice was, a, was, was allowed to actually voice out his views and his own personal views on Israel just obviously because he's not speaking that in the space of, of, of the constitutional court. He's speaking outside the constitutional court. Right. So he is afforded the right to actually speak out and give a view. Absolutely. And I, I think you're spot on because, again, it's in the foundational values of this country, the idea that we, we are a free, or we should be freer, but we're a free by and large uh, democracy and people should be able to voice their opinion. Ivy, I know this is a major issue for you on your side, you know, the, the attack on the freedoms, um, even in your part of the world, of people who are... Um, you know, who voice support for the state of Israel. Um, I, I, I think I, I need to re ask you to relate it in your own context. What are some of the attacks you guys endure as advocates, not only of Israel, but also of just freedoms, including the freedom of speech? Oh, well, first of all, we are shut down and lambasted and silenced on a daily basis not just by individuals or by politicians or by journalists, but big tech, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. I have been, my account has been shut down. Uh, I've had pages that have been shut down, uh, both on Facebook and on Twitter. I have friends that have been shut down. Total censorship because big tech has its own political correct rules of speech they allow it. They, they say they're against hate speech, but people can talk about killing Jews. The leader of Iran could tweet about destroying Israel, and that's okay. But if uh, a Jew or someone who supports Israel stands up for Israel or says something true about Iran or about the, 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 the terrorism that we're up against, then our voices are shut down. And I'll, I'll give you an example. If, if that chief justice or if any chief justice would have said, I support Iran. 
would would there be such a blow up of the issue? Would there be any press about it whatsoever? I, I I'm imagining no, not at all. And wait a second, who's Iran? And I have nothing against the Iranian people, but in terms of the the, the Islamic regime of Iran, they are the biggest terror supporting state in the world. They are right now fighting all fronts. They have taken over Syria. They have taken over Lebanon. They are at war in Yemen. They are they are at war in, against Saudi Arabia. They support terror terror cells all over the world. That's right. They are a nuclear power that essentially the world is trying to stop from becoming a nuclear power. But if anyone says anything about I support Iran, everyone will be quiet. That's There's right. nothing wrong with that. But if it comes to saying support for Israel. All of a sudden, oh my God. So you already know you're talking about a political, correct, leftist agenda that is shutting down speech according to its political agenda. Okay. It has nothing to do with values. It has nothing to do with justice. And this doesn't just have to do with politics of the Middle East. Uh, if, if someone says today, oh, I love, I, I, I love, um, I, uh, I love gay people, right? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's beautiful. Wonderful thing. All of a sudden says, you know what? I think there's something morally wrong with being gay. Right? He'd be shut down. Right. He'd be right. shut down, right? And there's nothing to... And I'm a person. I respect people's opinions. I, I might disagree, but we could, we could, we could argue. We could discuss issues. There are moral, morals. There are values. But in today's today's world, the, in, the the issue of freedom of speech has nothing to do with justice or morality. It has to do with a virulent, uh, very aggressive uh, leftist agenda to shut down speech about v issues that they don't agree with. And, issue is, and, and Israel is one of those issues that they hate. So they shut down and try to silence and shame and delegitimize Anybody who comes out in support of Israel or in support of Zionism, the Jewish people's right to our ancestral homeland, that's the world we live in, and we're on the front line of it every single day. Absolutely, and I, I think it's 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 such a serious issue, and people sort of under underrate or uh, um, not they don't take it as seriously as they should. The idea that what we're seeing here, really, as you said, has nothing to do with Israel itself. I mean, often what you hear are um, a, a a raft of misrepresentations, purposefully, of course, um, that are able that are meant rather. To cast Israel as the quote-unquote evil empire, um, and worse yet, if you then try and even correct the record, you know the the, the the language and the thought police are on you so quickly with all sorts of vitriol, all sorts of hatred. Um, in in most cases, it, it's rather anti-Semitic, if I'm to be brutally honest, and it hides under this weird guise of saying, "Oh no," they'll say, "We're not anti-Jew or we're not anti-Semitic. We're anti quote unquote Zionism." Is the often thing you often hear uh, these groupings uh, saying. Um, but let me come back to you very briefly, uh, Klaus, um, okay. because I think your, your piece was critically important in the context of South Africa in terms of defending free speech, defending our ability as South Africans to actually speak out on a lot of issues. Because as you might know, I, I don't know where you stand um, ideologically on whatever issues, and, and you know what I was trying to get at is this. In this country, we, we now have these various groupings where whatever, by the way, they're also on the left and the right, if I'm to be brutally honest, who see themselves as the thought and the language police. Um, what has the response been to your piece when it uh, was first published? Like, what, what, what sort of response did you get? So uh, once in a while, after I publish a piece, I decide to go to the comments. And uh, this time around, I also did the same thing. I went to the comments and, well, the, the reception was more like 70, 30. Most of the people agreed with me and 30%, but obviously I do check the, the 30%. And people were just disagreeing with me, talking about, um, uh, no, you really don't understand what's happening in the Middle East, <laughs> meaning you have never been to, to Israel. That's why you don't understand why the chief justice said that. People like feel like they're actually making assumptions that I haven't been to Israel. At the time, I've been to Israel a number of times yeah. and I've spent over weeks there while I'm that side laying about the issues themselves. And obviously some people on Twitter, they actually uh, supported me on, on, on social media, especially even on Facebook, they came and supported me. But uh, generally, um, uh, 
I had discussions with, with my fellow people on, on, on the phone as well, and where we discussed the issues that are, they wanted to understand what's happening in the Middle East. And I came to a conclusion that, actually I came to a realization that most of the South Africans actually don't understand what's happening in the Middle East. That's right. They don't wake up every day and think about Israel and Palestine. They have their own internal issues that they need to sort out. But obviously, whenever this issue comes up, we have a, a number of groups that actually want to sort of police our views. They don't want us to say things. But obviously, I wasn't really shocked when that came about. Uh, I wasn't really surprised. Because if you check all those organizations that wrote that article, or that support, I mean, that went against what the Chief Justice was saying, all those organizations are organizations that, organizations that are anti-Israel, yeah. are organizations that support Hamas. And obviously, they support an organization that doesn't afford people freedom of expression. That's right. So I was like, okay, these guys, I understand why they're doing this. They don't want anyone to speak out there. They don't want even the chief justice to voice out his own views. They don't want an individual, a, 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 an ordinary South African to voice out their views. So I understood why uh, they came out like that. But obviously, we need to stop that. We can't allow such organizations to exist actually in our country where people are not allowed to voice out their, uh, their views on certain issues. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and guys, I, I'm mindful of time. And uh, let me just quickly say hello to everybody who's joined us on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. We are at the half hour mark of the show. Um, my apologies for having started later, as, as I mentioned earlier on. You'll see exactly why that happened. Um, we're in conversation with Abby Abelow from Israel and Wide and Mr. Klaas Mohomole, who, of course, is from the... Uh, oh, excuse me, Klaas, I, I, my, my notes closed in front of me. Um, I'll open it up very quickly now. From the, He's the coordinator for Africans for Peace here in South Africa, who wrote a wonderful rebuttal piece against, essentially, the furor that we were seeing from people losing their minds at the simple fact that the Chief Justice in this country voiced his support in his personal capacity for the state of Israel. Um, fellas, and I think, you know, we, we're getting at the, the, the meat and potatoes of this conversation in terms of saying, in most cases, it is, th there's two fronts here. There's two fronts here that I've identified, and I'm going to go into the comments soon enough to get some questions from mm -hmm. the viewers. But there's two fronts that we're facing here. On the one is a masked anti-Semitism, a masked um, Jew hatred, if I'm to be brutally honest, uh, that parades as um, being anti-Zionist, as I said earlier on. And I think, Evely, you, you rightly eviscerated um, that illusion and pointed out the hatred behind it uh, by groupings such as Hamas, um, who are friends with the governing party here in South Africa, by groupings, by the way, like uh, BDS, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, who are bosom buddies also with the political elites in this country, so that what they want is a society where you only hear their side of the narrative, a society where they do what we call in psychology as a concept creep, the idea that you take these terms or concepts that we all understand, slowly but surely expand the definition of them with the view of perverting the very meaning eventually. That's what leftists do really well, concept creep. And we're seeing that in this country where they, they, they take the, the notion of Israel, what we understand of it as South Africans who love Israel, people of faith. I mean, this is a country of 97% Christians, as I mentioned, a very strong Jewish community uh, also in this country. And what they do is they say, oh, you know, the, the home place of these faiths, the home place of these religions is a, a really bad place, they'll argue, and that it's, it's full of these quote-unquote evil Zionists. So let me come back to you, Avi, and say, what is a Zionist? Who is a Zionist? What does it mean to be a Zionist? Wow, great question, Big Daddy. It's actually a very simple answer, and it's not explains enough, even to my fellow Jews. Let's take a step back. Zionism comes from the word Zion. Anyone who, who, who reads the Bible, what does the word Zion refer to? Jerusalem. That's right. Zion refers to Jerusalem, the capital, the eternal capital of the Jewish people. Meaning Zionism is, is the Jewish identity because it's our connection to our eternal capital city, where our first and second temples stood, where King David set up the first Jewish kingdom, and where we are back sovereign in our homeland with that same exact 
capital city, the capital of the Jewish people today, and we look forward to one day rebuilding the third temple. So Zionism is a part of our Jewish identity. You cannot separate Jerusalem from the Jew, therefore you cannot uh, separate Zion from a Jew and his Jewish identity. In modern terms, today people refer to Zionism as the movement of self-determination for the Jews to once again return and be sovereign in their homeland, the land of Israel. So that very simply is what Zionism is. And every Jew, in a sense, if he respects himself, should automatically be a Zionist. Because as I just told you, Jerusalem, Zion, is part of our identity as Jews. And unfortunately, there are plenty of Jews also who are afraid of their Jewish identity and want to be accepted by this very politically correct world out there that is the one policing our speech and policing what we should or should not believe in. And unfortunately, they've been scared to stand up for their true, authentic Jewish identity. And they push themselves away and say, oh, I'm I'm not Zionist. Well, by a Jew saying he's not Zionist, he's basically saying he is moving himself away and disassociating himself from his own heritage and identity. And I feel sad for that person as a Jew. And anyone else who says, well, I'm anti-Zionist, well, you don't understand, and I I could say this to Christians, Christianity came from Judaism here in the homeland, Jesus was born in Bethlehem outside of my window. And here you could see the beautiful Judean hills where King David walked and where Jesus walked. And Jesus was in Jerusalem, in the temple, in Zion. So any Christian who denies the ancestral and eternal connection between the Jewish people and Jerusalem, the holy land of Israel, well, they have to go back and read the Bible and knock themselves in the head and say, wait a second, I, my knowledge has been re-engineered by people who hate the Jews. Mm. I cannot be a believing Christian and not believe in the eternal connection of the Jewish people and Zion, hence understanding and appreciating the existence of Zionism, the Jewish people's right to return to their homeland and be sovereign in their homeland. Absolutely. And again, I, I, I say this insofar as, you know, when I was in Israel um, and I met you, homie, like we literally, when we walked through those streets of Jerusalem, uh, there was a particular section we went to and we said, hey, it's more than just, you know, what, what Torah t- tells us and teaches us about uh, the birthplace and ra- rather actually the promised land of the Jewish people, there is hard archaeological evidence that points to this. In fact, you can't build in Israel, excuse me, in Jerusalem without there first being a uh, essentially an archaeological dig in a sense to make sure that there's nothing underneath that. Um, you know that, that that masks what could be uh, what, what could be the uncovering of a fantastic history. Do you want to do you quickly just chime in on that? Sure. I mean, first of all, I don't, were you at City of David, uh, Big Daddy? Yeah. Right, so the city of David, we're talking about King David. That's Archaeologists right. have uncovered the, the, the actual buildings that stood thousands of years ago when King David was king. And they don't just say, oh, here's some old stones that we found deep down. It must be King David. No, they actually found coins with names of people in the Bible. It's, there, it's it, There's real proof in the ground here. Now, if you ask me, I don't need any proof. I'm a Jew. I have the Bible. I know this is my homeland. Bethlehem is the same Bethlehem thousands of years ago. Shiloh, Hebron, Jerusalem. These are cities that exist today in the same exact place as when the Bible was written thousands of years ago. Uh-huh. I don't need archaeology. But for anyone who questions and anyone who is more intellect wants to be more intellectual about things, the archaeological finds with the proof of dating and actually names of people named in stories in the Bible, they were found here under the ground, and you are actually walking the streets, walking between destroyed homes that you read about in the stories in the Bible. And it's the the, the, the land of Israel is where the Bible comes to life.
life. So if anyone is listening and has not yet visited Israel, please come, one, to appreciate the beauty of reliving the Bible, and two, to see the vibrancy, diversity, unbelievable freedoms and equality that everyone has in Israel, including our Arab Muslims Mm -hmm. and Christians and atheists. Even though we're a Jewish state, everyone has freedom and equality, and you see it with your own eyes when you come and visit. Do not trust the media that has an anti Israel agenda. Absolutely. And I applaud your Chief Justice for coming out publicly saying that he supports Israel. And I applaud anyone who has the guts and stand up for the truth, whether regarding Israel or any issue, because the thought police are out there trying to shut us all down on whatever issues they are, they're, they're dealing with. But come, come to Israel, enjoy the beauty of our land the beauty of our people and see the truth with your own eyes. Absolutely. And as we head into the last sort of uh, 15 minutes of our chat, let me please open it up to the viewers. I know there's a whole host of questions popping up here and maybe a quick uh, little bookmark insofar as saying, guys, I do on this channel, as you guys know, I'm a massive free speech advocate, including with people I disagree with. I do open up my my show to people uh, and invite those who disagree, with, including the likes of your BDS. Um, they're more than welcome to come on here um, and have this discussion, have this debate with me. In fact, on social media, I've been inviting it um, all week long, but the cowards that they are uh, just do not come forward, especially when they know that they cannot bully and intimidate and shut down uh, or deplatform or cancel, as they now say these days, the likes of me and other stronger voices on this issue. So um, I just thought I should throw that out there for those who are maybe wondering, you know, is this just a a Zionist fest? Um, I'm happy that it is, (laughs) but um, I do invite the likes of um, BDS on the show uh, or those who hold opposing views. Okay, guys, I'm going to go straight into the comments. Uh, If you have any questions, please please pop it into the, the, um, the chat. I will put it to my guests on here as I sort of keep them for another 10 minutes or so and I ask them to indulge me in that regard, please. Um, but as I say this, I, I must maybe wrap up with a, uh, excuse me, a final question from me. Um, you know, Avi, when I went to Israel, and, and Klaus, you can also chime in here because I, you just said you, you have been to Israel yourself. You walk, as you land at Ben Gurion Airport, immediately you start hearing these passive voices in your head that you've been hearing in South African media for years, right? That say things like, ooh, careful, you're black and you're in Israel? Oh no, the, the Israeli government will, 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 will literally pounce on you. They hate you uh, because you're black. It's a, it's a racist apartheid state, they'll say. Um, and you, you hear other things like, oh, uh, maybe you're Muslim, right? And um, you know they'll say, ooh, if you're Muslim, they, they hate you, right? They, they, they try and exclude Muslims from, from that society. But the the moment you hit uh, the streets of Israel, you see street signs, for instance, or rather road signs, in all three languages that are spoken in that country, Arab, Hebrew, and English. Um, you know, you, you, you walk the streets of Tel Aviv, for example, multicultural, um, you know, diverse streets, if you will, if, if your definition, of course, of diversity is just uh, aesthetic and racial, then you should be lauding a place like Tel Aviv. Um, you know, right. and I did my street interviews in that part of the world. Uh, class, maybe just let me begin with you. Your experience of Israel when you were you there, were, were you in a apartheid state that was uh, hounding you as a black South African? <laughs> So let me give you a big background about myself. Uh, uh, I'll summarize because we don't have uh, enough time. So Please. when I went to Israel, I was uh, in my past life, I was a member of the BDS uh, because of I joined the BDS when I was in the sheep at vets, uh, when I was in the vets SRC. Yeah. Uh, we were to boycott. Do you remember to call RAW on campus? So I've done a number of things with the BDS. Uh, when Barack Obama came to South Africa, we had a march against him. When the Jewish people tried to host events on campus, we'll go there and storm and disrupt the events. Yeah. You know, a number of things. Uh, so what happened is that in 2015, when I got an opportunity to go to Israel, I was still uh, in the mindset that I'm going to an apartheid state. And because I was raised by parents that grew up under apartheid, I understood what I was putting myself into. So we fly straight to Israel, land in Tel Aviv, Ben Gurion Airport, take my bags after going through security check, put them on a trolley, I'm, I'm moving. Then because of I needed to use the restroom, 
um, in my mind, I'm like, oh, by the way, I'm in a, in a, in a perfect state, so mm-hmm. I need to do the things the right way. So I approached the, the security guard in in the airport and we're like, look, uh, can you please show me the blacks only bathrooms? And the guy looked at me funny, and I thought maybe this guy doesn't speak English because we're in the <laughs> Middle East and stuff like that. So, you know, when you are in a foreign land, you have to speak with sort of sign language, you know, because you're trying to get your point across. And I was like, no, yes, I want blacks only bathrooms. And the guy looked at me funny, but he, he spoke better English than mine even. He had an American accent. He was like, look, I don't understand what you're saying, but I understand the fact that you want a bathroom, but I don't understand why you say blacks only. Then I had to explain to him, I told him, look, I'm from South Africa, and I was told that Israel is an apartheid state. Right. In apartheid Africa, blacks and whites were not allowed to show bathrooms. We're not allowed to share the bathrooms. So please show me the bathrooms that a person like me can use, because I don't want to get arrested here. I don't want to share a prison with people inside, you know. <laughs> and we're like, look, we don't have that here. I can tell you that I was shocked and went to the bathroom. I was surprised to see these Arabs and stuff like that. Mm. Then we drove around Israel for like eight days and stuff like that. Uh, played beach volleyball uh, in, in, in Tel Aviv with Ethiopian Jews, with Arabs and stuff like that. Like we went all over. Mm. And I was like, where's the party they're talking about? I, I was told that I'm coming to an apartheid state. That's when I realized that these people are lying. These people are telling us stuff that we're gonna, are going to trigger our mind. Because it's easy to trigger a black person's mind. You just say there's apartheid somewhere and a black person will react because the black person in South Africa wouldn't want anywhere, I mean, anyone anywhere in the world to suffer the injustices of apartheid. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and again, I, I must bring in uh, Avi here because I'm sure he's heard this all before. Um, you know, the, the, this, this continuous lie that somehow the moment we land in Israel, you know, we're going to be segregated and somehow, we, we, you know, we're going to be watched and surveilled because we're black, right? Um, or that we, we're going to be watched and surveilled because of any other arbitrary reason, often groups like BDS. And I'm watching the comment section, a lot of people asking what BDS is. BDS is the uh, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions group. Um, you know, this is a group that basically, uh, and I, I must say this, they are terrorist sympathizing groups. They are the sort of groups that chill and support the likes of Hamas, a terrorist organization, the, ter- uh, the sort of organization that argue at face value that they stand for equality and, and freedom is what they'll say. But in reality, they're actually just a front for terrorist organizations like Hamas. But I'll, I'll let Abby dig into this with a little bit more detail. But Abby, again, um, class raises the, 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 the exact sort of rhetoric that we walk into when we come to Israel. We're told all sorts of, you know, sort of hooga booga booga type scary, scary stories. We rock up and we see the reality is just not exactly what we're taught, is it? No, not at all. Not, it's exactly the opposite. That's that's the crazy thing. And again, when talking about apartheid, and we're called Israel's called apartheid everywhere, and you're seeing the protests all over the world, and you see signs, Israel's an apartheid state. Let's break this down between two different type uh, associations of apartheid. One has to do with between whites and blacks, and the other has to do with we're called an apartheid state because we uh, 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 because we uh, put in apartheid against the Arabs. Yeah. That's what people. Are, that's what they're really saying about us today. So let's break those two, and I'll deal with both of them. In terms of the in terms of blacks in Israel, I don't know how many people know this, but Israel is the only country in the world historically that took blacks out of Africa to bring them to freedom. That's right. And I'm referring to Ethiopian Jews. Right. Right? They were black Jews living in Ethiopia. And during the 1980s and 90s, when Ethiopia was in a civil war and it was dangerous, Israel had secret missions and we flew secret airplanes into Sudan, Ethiopian, black Ethiopian Jews walked to Sudan and we rescued Ethiopian black Jews and brought them to Israel. Today, this Israel is Operation has Solomon a population in 1991, right? of black Jews with total freedom and equality. Our Miss Israel was an Ethiopian Jew, a black woman. That's right. We have a minister in the Israeli government who is an Ethiopian woman right now. There is no difference between blacks, whites, browns, yellows, reds. Jews are of all colors. That's right. I look white because my ancestors, uh, my grandparents are originally from Europe. 
but they're Ethiopian Jews who are black. They're Egyptian Jews who are Middle Eastern colors. There are Japanese Jews. There are Chinese Jews. There are South African Jews. Jews are Jews. We are not white, black, yellow, green. We're all color, but we're Jews. And we are. When you come to Israel, you see Jews are all colors, and we all live here free with, with equality and in freedom. That has to do with the black aspect of apartheid. In terms of the Arab aspect of apartheid, it is a blatant lie. If Israel is, was an apartheid state, we are a failure at being an apartheid state. Why? Because we have Arabs in our parliament. We have Arabs who are Supreme Court justices. We have Arabs who run hospitals. We have Arabs who have law practices. We have Arabs that do everything in this country. They have total freedom and equality together with Jews. Right. So the the name, the, the, the blaming Israel, labeling us, delegitimizing us as an apartheid state, one, it's a blatant lie, and two, it is our neighbors that practice apartheid. Go to Iran, go to Syria, go to some other Muslim countries, and if, you're, if it's a Sunni country, well, if you're Shiite, then you'll be persecuted by the Sunnis. And that's if you're Muslim. If you're, if you're, if you're a Yazidi, if you're Christian, you're also persecuted. Go to a Shiite country. If you're not Shiite, you're persecuted. Also, they also persecute their Sunni brothers and sisters. It is the Muslim countries that really practice a form of apartheid. And it's Israel that is a beacon of freedom and equality and diversity for all Yet so many people are not knowledgeable and buy the lies that are so easily fed to them by the mass media and politicians who unfortunately adopt an anti-Israel agenda. And my line is someone who's truly liberal, liberal in terms of respect, in terms, in terms of uh, freedom of speech, in terms of being able to discuss and allow live and let live. Anyone who is a true liberal must support Israel because Israel stands up for those values. And if someone says they're a liberal and they're anti-Israel, well, it's either because they don't know the truth or they're lying to themselves about being liberal and they're really left with an anti-Israel agenda. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Guys, as I look to wrap up the conversation and um, you know the sort of final two minutes of it, and I will give both of you an opportunity just to share your social medias or how people can reach uh, you and what shows maybe they can subscribe to. Um, let me maybe put a final question to the both of you. Fellas, as we look to perhaps, um, and I'm going to ask you to, 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 to put on your Zionist hat again um, for this particular question, but as we look to... Um, demystify and continue the work of demystifying, um, you know, uh, Israel and fighting back against the sort of hateful rhetoric that we hear from the likes of, you know, BDS, the likes of Hamas and the various vested interest groupings who support these organizations, including, by the way, including, by the way, if I'm to be topical and current, you know, Black Lives Matter, who harbor some serious anti-Semitic rhetoric in that part of the world, which is exactly why I cannot stand the likes of, of, of uh, Black Lives Matter, in any event, but I digress. Um, what do we do to raise awareness? What do we do to push back against the hate? Uh, Klaus, I'm going to begin with you in terms of you know, what you think your role could be to push back against the hatred and spread the truth on this issue. Look, uh, I think uh, we need to educate ourselves more as people, um, read more. Uh, I, I, I think I was saved by reading more and obviously not just reading one side of the story. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you that before, uh, obviously, when I was part of the BDS, I used to just read stuff about the Palestinians, watching movies that showed one side of the story. But later on, uh, I opened myself to reading more. I read books written by like uh, Anand Dershowitz, uh, Benjamin Pogren and stuff like that. That's when I realized actually there's a, there's a debate going on here. Then I was afforded an opportunity to go see it for myself. So people need to be educated. They shouldn't just allow the media to feed themselves or allow these organizations to feed themselves. They need more information and they need to go out there and look for that information. They mustn't be afraid to ask. They mustn't be afraid to actually go out there and research so that they can actually get a full page or a full picture of what's happening in uh, all over the world, whether it's in the Middle East or in Africa. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Avi, uh, you get the final word, brother. What do we do to continue to well, advocate for Israel and push back against the hatred? First of all, that's a, I, I believe Class is in a much better position to, to give the answer because he himself, and I, get, I have all the respect for you, man, Class, that he was an anti-Israel activist, and yet look where he is today because he started reading and because he came to Israel. So he, he is a much better person to, to give what things to read and what people should get information in order to educate themselves so they can hopefully turn from their anti, if they have an anti-Israel bias, to become enlightened by the truth about Israel and the Jewish people. So I'll, I'll leave that. The, the final message I want to give actually is a little, it's a little different. And my message is to, is not necessarily blacks, but to South Africans and anyone today who believes they are a victim or feel that they are oppressed. I believe the Jewish people what we've come through and where we came to be today, we are an inspiration for any people who believe that they are victimized or oppressed in any which way. You're talking about a people, the Jewish people, for 2,000 years we were in exile out of our homeland, persecuted everywhere, persecuted in the Middle East, persecuted in Europe, everywhere. We were expelled from every country possible, from Poland, from Britain, from Spain, from Portugal. We were persecuted for 2,000 years, and yet we don't focus on that. Mm. We focus on rebuilding our homeland and making Israel to be one of the most amazing countries, not just for ourselves, but to help humanity. I don't know how many of your viewers know Israel is helping so many African countries exactly. with water technology, with drip irrigation, with solar technology, with medical technology. Israel is here to help humanity. And any people or any country who believes that they are oppressed or victimized, look to the Jewish people for inspiration that even though we experienced 2,000 years of persecution culminating with the horrendous Holocaust by the Nazi Germans only 70 plus years ago, look at us today. We are a tiny people in a tiny country doing so much for humanity. And this is while we're also dealing with enemies trying to kill us each and every day and us treating them as humanely as possible. Because believe me, if Israel was Russia or America, we would have carpet bombed Hamas and the Palestinian Authority and all the terrorists decades ago. But we don't. We treat them with, with, with silk gloves and we allow them to continue to terrorize us and we allow them to pay their terrorists and their families salaries. Their terrorists earn more money in jail than the regular Palestinian Arab does from working a hard day's job. That's they crazy. reward terrorism. Israel is here to help humanity learn the truth. And while you listen to, to class about what to read and what information to go to, my one thing would be save that money and come to Israel to see the truth with your own eyes. Nothing is like the truth, seeing it with your own eyes. So do it. Make it happen. Class is not the only person that I've heard who used to be a BDS activist anti-Israel. Then they came to Israel and they were shocked to see everything they were taught about Israel and the Jewish people were lies. Yeah. And then they turned into big Israeli supporters. And I'll leave you with one story. And this is somebody who you know as well, uh, Big Daddy, mm -hmm. Kasim, a British, a, a British Muslim. That's he right. was a British Muslim. He was anti-Israel. He came to Israel. He saw the truth about Israel and the Jewish people. He then ends up going to America, converted to Christianity, and he is now a leader in Christians United for Israel. Mm -hmm. He was brought up to hate Jews. He was active on college campus against Israel. He was going to be a terrorist. He was on his way to, to a terrorist training camp in Afghanistan. And today he is a Christian leader of Christians United for Israel, one of the strongest voices out there standing up for Israel because he came to Israel and he saw the truth with his own eyes. Nothing beats the truth with your own eyes. So come to Israel, everybody. Absolutely. Oh, gentlemen, thank you so much. Goodness me, Avi, you left me on that, 
that last trail, man, that, that's exactly what Tikkun Olam is about, you know, being an example to the world. And that is exactly what we Jews are to the rest of the world. And again, Abby is absolutely correct. Come to Israel, see for yourself. Fellas, maybe as a last gasp, how do the people reach you, class? Um, what are your socials, brother? Okay, uh, on Facebook, um, classism, K L A A S I S M M K Mokomole, M O K G O M O L E. On, on, on Twitter, I'm Brainwasher One. Oh, like that one, okay. <laughs> and um, Abby, homie, Israel Unwide, how do the folks reach you? How do they subscribe and get on, on, on board? I'm easy. First of all, I have two very important websites with the truth about Israel one, and, and about current events. One is IsraelOnWire.com. The other one is PulseOfIsrael.com. And you could find me on all social media with my name, Avi Abelo, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now Parler. Parler is the new free speech social That's media right. as people are getting censored on Facebook and Twitter. You're seeing a mass exodus to Parler for sp free speech. That's P-A-R-L-E-R. -E and again, my handle everywhere on all social media platforms is my name, Avi Abelo, A-V-I-A-B-E-L-O-W. Reach out, tell me you heard me on the Big Daddy Show, and I look forward to seeing you online for everybody. Fantastic. Thank you to my guest. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And um, as I transition to you, dear viewer, thank you for being a part of the Big Daddy Liberty Show as we talk all things Israel, Zionism, and hey, free speech in particular. So from my side, I definitely support the Chief Justice. Look... One's freedom to be able to express themselves should never be infringed. Yes, we can disagree, and that's fine. That comes with being a free society. But if someone wants to express themselves freely, my goodness, let us be the society that allows that, that allows the conversation, that allows the debate, as you experienced here tonight. And uh, remember, you can support your favorite fat boy, Big Daddy Liberty, the street fighter of classical liberalism in South Africa, as I actually travel the country. As I said, I'm in Durban at the moment, and I'm about to hit, my, uh, hit the road. Excuse me on the Liberty Tour, driving the Liberty Bus across this country, winning hearts and minds on the issue of building a free, prosperous, property-owning and non-racial society and pushing back the rolling hand, the creeping hand of the state and socialism. If you want to be a part of the Liberty Bus, remember you can support me for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon. I'll have all those links in the description. Of course, I'll have the links of the description of my guests. Uh, excuse me, I'll have the links to my guests in the description also on the show. Guys, remember, um, the show comes out every Wednesday, the Big Daddy Liberty Show. I will see you on Sunday for Late Nights with Big Daddy Liberty. And hey, a few blogs in between the way too. So guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching the show. And remember, as I end, as I end every show, never trust a commie.